No, okay. We're okay. All right. Good. So we have the slideshow, and um, when you're done speaking, so we're, each person will have their part, and then we go through, and then there will be some question and answers, possibly, from the audience, and I have some questions coming in from people that have provided me questions before. And we have a special announcement to make, right? So we're looking forward to that. Um, please let every speaker finish before the next person talks. Okay. So we're in we're in a we're in a row. So the the lineup is that I'm going to introduce the problem mathematically. So on on the data, Michael Landis is a trauma one registered nurse who will talk about the need to bank blood. Right, so he's going to be, he's in Costa Nui, he's online. Um, and then we have our honored guest here who will talk, you will talk about the RH negative, what the uh, Thai Red Cross does yes. for special needs. Yes. And I think it's then important to un for everyone to understand the, the challenge that we have mm -hmm. with expat unawareness and Okay, good evening, everybody. It is a absolute privilege to have you join our panel where we believe that giving blood is giving life. And today we're going to speak about the importance of blood donation. Whatever your blood type is, donating blood will 100% help somebody. We are focusing on RH negative today because of the rarity in the Thai population. So we have some speakers. Next slide, please. Okay, so our honored speaker this evening is Dr. Isarang Nukprayung. He is the advisor to the Thai Red Cross, um, a professor at the Chula University on the board of hematology. And you, have, uh, you are an MD, a medical doctor, and a PhD, and a diplomat. So we have one of the most honored speakers and I'm very grateful for your attendance. You so thank you, sir. Thank you. To be here. Um, I, my name is Nancy Rauer. My former career was I was a professor of political science, and now I am the administrator of the Facebook group, uh, Thailand Emergency Blood Donations. And I will speak about the value of our Facebook group and advocacy. Uh, Michael Landis will be joining us via Zoom. Um, he is in Koh Samui. He is a registered nurse who has worked at the trauma centers, uh, level one trauma, and intensive care unit um, with uh, complex surgical operations. He will be joining us via Zoom. Um, Luca is a former O negative patient uh, who was here in Bangkok in August. And we are, we can say that we are blood brothers because I am a donor. I'm an O negative donor to Luca. Miss Sue Altman, her and her husband flew in here from Phuket. Uh, it is their anniversary. But this was important for her to tell her story. She was an O negative patient in, uh, in Phuket in 2020. And whether you knew me then or not, I helped work your case. And finally, we have Ms. Nakrita Monsang. She is our star donor. She recognizes the rarity of RH negative in the Thai population. 
She found out that she was A negative through a regular donation. And once she learned that she was A negative, she has been a routine donor for the last 10 years, and she has never missed a single one and every 90-day donor. So thank you all for being part of this panel. Most of the people that are watching this panel this evening are, are coming in on Facebook Live. Uh, the organization Thailand Emergency Blood Donations is an advocacy group, and we have people from Koh Samui, from Chiang Rai, from Karat. So most of the audience is actually watching us uh, via Facebook Live. Okay. Um, next slide. So um, I would like to honor this panel in the memory And I said I wasn't going to cry, right? Have you got tissues? No, I gave them to you. <laughs> um, I would like to honor this panel in the memory of Herr Schlegel of uh, Chiang Mai. We were unable to source a donor for him. And we worked this aggressively for six days. And when I mean aggressively, uh, myself and his Thai friend couldn't come. We went to expat restaurants, German restaurants. Um, I even went to bars on Friday night looking for O negative donors. Um, it was too late and he passed away recently, Monday, 13 February. And the takeaway here is that, um, we'll touch on this more, that there is a need to bank blood. Okay. So this panel is in honor of Mr. of Herr Wolfgang Schlegel. Next slide. So I'd like to talk mathematically about RH negative rarity in Thailand. So blood type is genetic. Um, the Western European population has the highest concentration. Uh, the United Kingdom is approximately 25% is RH negative. And then we get to Germany, 15%. Um, Italy, maybe 12%. Then we, India, 2%. And then the further we go down, when we get here to Thailand, it is 0.3%. Now this number also is important to recognize that O negative, as an example, can only take from O negative. So let's say one out of 1,000 Thai people are O negative. Not every one out of those 1,000 can donate. Some are infants, some are pregnant, some recently donated, some are, you know, 70. Somebody may have, you know, cancer or recovering from an illness. So mathematically, when you look at the eligible donor pool from the Thai population from O negative, it is not one out of 1,000. It might be more along the lines of one out of 8,000. This is akin to finding a needle in the haystack. The, Thai, the American Red Cross states that once you are at the level of one out of 1,000, it is almost impossible to find donors for a blood transfusion. It's considered a rare blood type. <clears throat> so yes, in the Thai population, it is a rare blood type. Now I have been working the RH negative awareness and uh, advoca advoca advocacy and sourcing donors, and I will say that the Thai population is extraordinarily generous, they are conscientious, and they have their own groups where they mobilize donors, the RH negative. Mathematically, there simply is not enough of them, despite their incredible generosity, to support the large expat population that we have here. So a routine emergency in our home country, which could be a 10 unit emergency, let's say you're O negative, you might be looking at a population of 80,000 Thai people to be able to source that 10 units. And this is where the expat community needs to help ourselves. And we can solve the entire problem for all of the RH negative 
patients in Thailand through awareness and through regular donations and through education of understanding that Thailand has one of the lowest RH negative population in the world. And by contrast, the Western European has the highest concentration of RH negative. So awareness and advocacy and routine donations are the solution. So with this said, we normally have zero RH negative blood banked in many um, blood centers. Um, the National Blood Center here in Bangkok tries to maintain a minimal stock. I am aware that Chiang Mai uh, has gone for months without any A negative or O negative, and we are um, aggressively working to change that. But the takeaway that everyone should leave here with, if there is nothing else from this, is that we as the international community, we need to donate here exactly as we do in our home countries. My story, my personal story, is that I was a routine donor in the United States, in Germany. That's easy for me. I speak German and I speak English. I never even thought about donating here in Thailand. I didn't know that blood type was genetic. There was an emergency in Suratani when I was living in Koh Samui. And they wanted O negative. And I said, sure, I'll go. I thought this was crazy. Um, you know, I thought this is, you know, you could probably go to any 7-Eleven and find a lot of O negative donors, <laughs> okay? But, um, I said that I would go, I kept my word, and I took the first ferry to Suratani to donate. And I left the hospital, walked down the stairs, and almost walked away without questioning this, and I thought, as a former professor of political science, this is Thailand with an excellent healthcare system. This is not a war-ravaged country. And I'm so thankful that I turned around and walked back up those stairs and asked the question, why did you have a problem with O negative? And that's when they told me, we do not have it in the Thai population. So this was 2019. And since then, I have made it um, one of our goals to educate the international community of what we can do here. Now, mind you, I was here for two and a half years. I arrived in 2017 and never knew until 2019. And if I didn't walk back up those stairs and ask the question, I probably still would not know. Anyways, thank you for your time today. Um, we are going to have the next speaker, Michael Landis. Um, so it would be next slide, please. Up, oh, I already went through this, up, oh, real quick. So our strategic objectives of this panel are to educate the international community on the importance of donating blood exactly as we do in Germany, the United States, or Australia. Um, we will advocate to remove restrictions to increase the blood supply, and there will be more on this today, this evening. And we encourage RH negative donors in, particularly, in particular to donate every 90 days and join our advocacy team, our Facebook group, Thailand Emergency Blood Donations. Okay. Next slide. Okay. Michael Landis will be coming up on Zoom. Nancy, I, I, can, I can hear you, I can't see you right now. Um, I don't think you need to see me, but we see you. We see you. I, I can't see the slides at this point. Is there any oh, way to put Oh, they're reversed. Them I see what's happening. Thank you. Hi, everybody. While, while they're working on that, I'm just going to say thank you to everybody that helped put this together. Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Nick Pryun, for uh, your attendance and for your, your help in, uh, in educating anywhere that you can to get this point across. Uh, we are immensely grateful. And uh, to the other people on the panel, um, God bless you, because I know what you've been through, and let's see what we can do to solve this. Right. They're working on putting the slides back up? Yes. Thank you. 
Uh, I'll just introduce myself before that comes on. My name is Michael Landis. I'm from the U.S. Uh, I retired as a registered nurse. I had uh, a long career in the hospital working in cardiac units. I worked in the operating room for a few years. And I retired um, as an RN in a level one trauma center uh, in the trauma ICU. So uh, blood, do blood donations very unfortunately were a regular part of my life um, in the ICU. And one of the things that uh, I'm going to mention is the work that we're doing uh, is to educate the, the expat population on the need to donate and uh, I'm going to also speak about the need for blood banking uh, because when you have an immediate trauma uh, that requires a transfusion in order to maintain, uh, maintain your organs and keep you alive, you cannot substitute IV fluids. Uh, I can put all the IV fluids I want into you, but if we don't have the blood that you need, we can't carry oxygen to your cells. And unfortunately, if you need it and we don't have it, uh, you're not going to make it. So uh, we currently have only been able to help the people that are uh, experiencing what I would call an intermediate trauma. They are injured. They're able to stay alive long enough for us to organize a group of people to go and donate. That blood then travels from wherever we're donating up to the National Blood Center or to other regional centers to be processed. It, this can take uh, 24, 48 hours plus travel time and then come back to the patient. Uh, so we are only able to help those particular patients, frankly, that are not injured badly enough to, to pass away immediately. And we, the solution to that, the solution is blood banking. If the blood is available, we can save a lot of lives. Um, Nancy, I still don't have any slides on my screen. I'm not sure uh, if you guys um, are seeing No, that. we don't. Mm -hmm. OK. Can you do the split screen? So we, have, we should have Michael um, on Zoom, and we should have the slides. Oh, they're on that screen. That's the wonderful part of being here. We have a lot of TV cameras. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, I'll tell you what, I, I can, so. Uh, there we go. All right. Um, I was a regular donor in the United States. Uh, some of this is a little self-serving. I myself am O negative. Uh, however, like Nancy, we share a lot in this regard. I did not know that O negative, or frankly, all of the RH negatives were so rare in Thailand until there was an emergency. Uh, I am, Excellent. I'm not in Koh Samui. I'm actually on Koh Phangan. Um, and so we're an even smaller area with some smaller regional hospitals. And uh, what happened was, as you can see on the slide there, we had a Russian woman. She was hit on the side of the road by uh, what turned out to be a drunk driver. And uh, she was very badly injured. Um, I, they put out a call on one of the local Facebook groups and I, you know, I immediately offered to help and I started asking any of my friends, hey, uh, are any of you, she unfortunately was O negative and could only receive blood from those of us who are O negative. Uh, I was able to organize 10 people. We put them into a speedboat. We zoomed over to Samui because we were not able to donate here on Kopangan. And uh, even then, uh, two of those people wound up being uh, rejected because they had not donated in Thailand uh, before the age of 60. So they wound up being turned away even and I, I pointed out they were regular donors in their home countries and were used to the process and they were, were shocked that they were turned away. Um, this, is, as Nancy pointed out, it's not a matter of selfishness. Uh, the Thai people are incredibly generous donors. They just don't have this blood. It's not available. And so, uh, what actually I'm sort of hoping is that as we educate the expat population and try to get people to really donate on a regular, coordinated basis that we will be able to put some of this blood back into the Thai system and help them. Uh, because in many other ways, while we are guests in their countries, they have helped us immensely. So uh, as I said, there is no substitute for blood. Uh, they are working on it, but it doesn't exist yet. Um, this Russian woman, very, very unfortunately, and, and uh, uh, without being graphic, um, her, 
her pelvis was badly fractured, and the pelvis is an area where there's a lot of blood moving up and down the body, and she was forced to lie in her bed for four days without moving, no moving at all. They didn't want her nothing because they were afraid that she was going to re-bleed, and as I mentioned, she was an intermediate patient. Uh, as an ICU nurse, I was definitely concerned about the levels that I was seeing, but she was not in immediate uh, danger of dying. She just was very, very, very ill. And for four days with large broken bones in her body, she just had to lie there and wait for this blood to arrive back in, in Koh Samui. So this was a, a terrible situation. I visited her a couple of times. I, if someone has an accident here in Thailand and it's a, a trauma, and, I, and I'm speaking in this case uh, uh, about trauma, but it applies to just about everything. If, if they have a trauma and they need blood and they don't get the blood and they pass away, the cause of death is trauma. Uh, when That's what we call it. But the real cause of death, which was preventable, was a lack of blood. We just didn't have it. So that's what this entire panel is about tonight. Uh, is let's make this happen. Um, uh, let's see. We are able to, mo to mobilize people. Uh, Nancy has been doing it for a lot longer than I have. Uh, I was able to, to find enough people on this island to successfully uh, you know, transfuse for this Russian woman and a few other emergencies that we've had since then. We maintain a very small database of the people that are here but this is a, a small regional center. Um, that's why I'm coming back to banking blood is the solution. Uh, can I move to the next slide, please? Next slide. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so uh, like everyone on this panel, I think we have, all, <laughs> we have all basically invented methods for trying to get the word out about RH negative blood. My close friends are absolutely sick of hearing me talk about RH negative blood, and if anything, when I meet people socially, oftentimes my first question is, what is your blood type? Because I'm so afraid of losing the opportunity to get the phone number of somebody uh, here who could be of assistance when the time comes. Uh, uh, Nancy and, and Dr. Suprayun are, are going to talk about uh, issues with um, some of the the restrictions uh, that have been in place for many years. Uh, uh, with donors coming from Europe primarily, and, and some other restrictions. Uh, but it, since it affects the European people so much, uh, anything that lowers our available pool mathematically multiplies, and it means that instead of one in 1,000, as Nancy said, excuse me, it turns into one in 8,000. So we're really hoping to decrease that. And then my current project is uh, speaking to the local hospitals here on Kopangan and what um, myself and a number of the other RH negative donors have talked about is we, uh, now that we know the issue, would be very willing to organize ourselves into small groups to donate regularly. Uh, and what we would like is for some of that blood to come back to Kopangan and stay banked here, uh, at least for a little while, um, because blood does expire fairly quickly and that's a problem for, for everyone. Uh, keep that blood here for a little while in case of a trauma, and then uh, before it expires, you can send it out into the general population where it will almost certainly be used right away, and we will then send down a new group of donors to replace that blood and try and keep this system going. Uh, we do not have this in place yet, but it is something that we're working on, and we would hope to bring that out to the larger communities. So at first here, it's Kopangan. Next, we would like to go to uh, Koh Samui and then potentially Suratani and begin to liaise more with the National Blood Center and the regional blood banks that distribute blood uh, <clears throat> for us. So it is a major goal of ours to accomplish these two things, uh, educate the population, begin to entice them into donating much more regularly than, than they currently are, uh, and you know, let them know about the absolute rarity of this here and how it affects them. If they have an accident, there's not likely to be any blood unless they are also donating and become part of the solution. So uh, I'm gonna leave uh, with this. I know there's 
uh, people from <clears throat> members of the press that are there and members of the press that are online, we'd really like to ask you, to beg you, uh, how is it that you might be able to help us uh, get this get this uh, word out to the expat population? Uh, Rh negative blood is incredibly rare here. It's much more rare than at home. The moment that you step foot in Thailand, you become at risk where you were not at risk at home. And we are asking you to really step up, uh, join us, and begin donating regularly so that we can that's our solution to blood banking, is simply having more blood available. And with that blood banking, we will save many, many lives. So uh, thank you for listening. Uh, with that, I'd like to turn it, I believe Dr. Suprayun is going to speak next. And uh, you know, thank you for listening to me, and I hope to see you all regularly uh, in the chair next to me at the Blood Donation Center. Thank you, Michael. Okay, next slide, and now I'm going to introduce um, Dr. Nuk Prayun, who's going to speak about RH negative and what the National Blood Bank does here for RH negative. Um, there we go. And we can, take, uh, we can take Michael Landis off of the Zoom now and put the regular slides up for the audience, please. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for um, inviting me to share with you um, about the, our experience in Irish negative uh, blood no donor recruitment. As uh, mentioned, uh, as Nancy mentioned, um, Irish negative is a special type of blood in Thailand um, because of uh, the uni unique genetics, um, ethnic groups. In fact, it was the uh, lowest among all the population, um, which is um, make it very special. Now, um, when we're talking about, uh, in general, the blood donation situation in Thailand is actually much better than other countries in Southeast Asia and South Asia. Uh, we were very proud of that. We, um, <clears throat> I would say the blood uh, donation and the recruitment is just about, um, just about enough for the use of, of, of the medical system. Well, some types of blood are uh, inadequate, which is a platelet uh, transfusion but the packed red cell transfusion, we have worked over 50 years to have just about adequate supply. Yeah. But this does not apply to the, old, uh, the ne Irish negative blood, which is a rare uh, type of blood group. Okay, with the, with the good system that we have, the, we have to do um, a special um, management you can, uh, this, this slide will show you that uh, because of the rarity, we have to make all the Irish negative donors special you know, because we need, uh, we need the donors so much. We have made uh, so many special um, privilege, I would say, <laughs> because um, uh, there's always a threat when people want some blood and we don't have it banked. You know, that's, that is like non, not a very, uh, that is below our expectation. Uh, we, 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 we were not happy with this. So in order to do this, we have a very specific management. Uh, first of all, we will maintain uh, a list of uh, donors who are Irish negative, mostly Thai people. Uh, and we, we, we tell them they are special people and uh, we will call upon them on the needs. Yeah. So we maintain a database, and if there's a need, we will contact them to invite to specifically donate, because the blood uh, needs uh, you know, processing for two days before it can be uh, considered safe and be distributed for the patient. So as soon as we know, we invite every, every eligible people to come and donate, okay? And we even send the cars to get them from there where their residence is in order to get donation, okay? 
and um, and we also make a special blood drive for Irish negative donors. Of course, all of these are in Thai language. No, we <laughs> we do not because all, all the workers are in Thai and all the communications are in Thai. So we um, <clears throat> we did not have, actually before I know Nancy, we were not aware that expats are you know in, uh, interested in this at all. So we did not actively seeking our collaboration with you all. Um, so but now that we see now a possibility that because um, um, that is true, that is the uh, highest negative donors um, are highly prevalent in the, you know, in the European uh, population. So this is uh, actually a potential solution for all of this. Yeah. So in cases of emergency incidents, so we will uh, make uh, several um, high specific uh, ways of communications to recruit donor in time. Next slide, please. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> the, the, the best donors for the blood system is the regular donor. Because when uh, people donate you know, once, once in their lifetime, we often found that there were some, you know, some unexpected uh, qualities that was, you know, needs to be rejected from the donation because we want to provide safe blood for everyone, every recipient. Yeah. For example, unknowingly we might find some units have some occult infection and that, you know, by international standards cannot be uh, transfused to p patients and that's why it takes two days for testings. And um, Thailand uh, blood supply has been considered one of the safest because we use the most um, rigorous testing uh, you know, compared to, uh, as, as adopted by international standards. And this is um, far better than neighboring countries. Um, so in order to do this, we encourage the Irish negative, at least Thai donors, to donate more than once a year. You know, if it's four times a year, that would be the best. best. Because as, um, as Michael has mentioned, the blood that saves life is the blood that's in the bank. You know, because they can be used right away and that will save life. But because we don't have that, we, you know, we have some banked blood, but as soon as uh, there was an accident or incident, they will be quickly uh, used. And uh, if you say you need 10 units, we can only give one unit right away, but the next um, nine units has to come from the, uh, the people who we have in the database. And that's often not uh, quick enough. That for, for our use, okay? So we invite, uh, uh, invite actually every kind of donors to become a regular donors because we know if you, uh, you know, passed the uh, standard testing once, uh, once a year, you are almost likely to pass the standard testing every time. So it's better to regularly donate because we know it's the best quality of the blood that we have. Next, please. Okay. So on the next slide, we show you here that the um, uh, numbers of patients uh, in, the, in the next slide. Uh, oh, slide top, I, uh, um, here we go. We have, uh, uh, of all the people in the database, the people who are eligible for donation is not 100%, as you see. It's only 90% or so, and the numbers will go, will vary each year. Uh, depends on a lot of conditions. Uh, like the donor convenience, for example. And we are talking about 6,000 uh, Irish negative in, in the whole Thai population of 60, 66 million. Okay, that's this is all that we had identified. Okay, um, so next slide, please. <clears throat> next slide, we show you that the repeated donors, uh, um, uh, at least we were successful in uh, the Irish negative people are, re are repeated donors. Yeah, because there's only a few of them, so in, <laughs> we invite them to in, um, donate as regular, uh, as frequent as as they uh, as they can. Sometimes once a year, sometimes twice, three times, and four times. In the next slides we show you uh, slide up by now, and that the, this is uh, donations a year. You can see this is divided by the number of the times they donate a year. 
we want uh, everyone to be, you know, in the, in the dark blue, you know, but so far only a few <laughs> can donate four times a year. Yeah. And the, you can see the COVID, you know, and this is by year, the, the COVID has made this a pro particularly problematic because of the safety concerns and restriction as well, that is all those years, okay? So in short, uh, this, is the, this is what we have to adapt in order to cope with the fact that RS negative is a rare blood type in Thailand. So we, we, we would uh, very much uh, you know, change the, this way of doing it to become, if there's a, a regular supplies of bank blood, say from uh, uh, a lot of larger population, yeah, like from the, all of you here who are in the audience, if uh, every, everyone, I would say not Irish positive, negative, whatever, you are know, invited to, you know, you donate, and we will significantly increase the supply for the banked uh, Irish negative bloods, <coughs> so that we, we don't have a threat uh, for the inadequate blood supply in the future. Thank you. Next slide, and now I'm going to introduce Luca. Luca is from. Oh, oh sorry. Did you, okay, is we it done here? Oh, no. this is our, our registry of uh, how many foreign blood donors that was in the database. Okay, you can see here around 200 O negative blood. It is in database, but I don't know exactly how many expats are here, no, but definitely it should be hundred. Uh, Hundred thousand or so. Yes. So we we would uh, we would, we think that we can have a much more room much more room for improvement for the uh, supply for the all negative blood. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Next slide. Next slide. Hello, everyone. That's a nice picture. <laughs> I know this picture well. <laughs> don't know why you got this one. Um, so I'm uh, obviously a, a negative patient. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. It's quite actually a, a, a peculiar fact that I'm here because I should be dead um, because there was no blood for me. So uh, during our conversation with uh, Nancy, uh, I say I didn't really care if the blood was contaminated or not, I just needed it. Mm -hmm. mm. And uh, it's just like uh, how I went from uh, having something very, very benign and how it turned out into uh, being a very complicated medical case. Okay. So, um, next slide. Next slide, please. So I spent uh, about 21 days in, uh, in the ICU. Uh, it started with something just uh, a bit random, just uh, internal bleeding with an ulcer. Uh, and uh, it's then the, the journey started. Uh, I started on a 6 a.m. on a Monday morning. Uh, and uh, I went to the hospital. They managed to stop the bleeding. Uh, they had a couple of units, uh, which uh, at that time already uh, lost a lot of blood, which basically uh, was enough to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to keep me going until they, they, could, they could do the surgery. Then the surgery managed to stop the bleeding and they let me go out. Uh, and then I went back home and uh, well, started bleeding again. So, and that's, that's, that's when it starts being very interesting uh, because I go to the hospital and then it's like, there's no doctor, there's no blood. So what do you do? Well, just wait here and die. Uh, so, but the people around me decided it's not going to happen. So they they sent me to Bangkok. Um, and <laughs> sorry. Good. It's the first time I talk about it. So, no. <laughs> so the, the hospital wanted wanted me as a patient because they had no blood. And uh, they don't want someone to come and die there. So eventually, my, my, my odds of surviving were, were so low that, sorry, 
that it took a lot of uh, ingenuity to get me accepted into a hospital. So we used uh, all the connections. Uh, I've been living here for a long time, so I know a lot of people. And uh, many of them just uh, helped me. So I got patched another time, and then I started bleeding again. And of course, every time I was bleeding, they were giving me one unit or two. But ultimately, my blood levels were going down. Uh, down to a point where my, my, I mean, I should not be there. I mean, for the second time, I, sh I, I have to say I'm lucky to be here. And my friends went around, knocked on doors, contacted anybody that they could find to try and get blood. <laughs> and they did. So that's why I'm here. So, um, Sebastian. So I think what Luca would like to say next is without the, the Thai, you were on the Thai network and the Thai people donated. There just isn't enough of them to pull this through. And Sebastian is a very good friend of yours and Sebastian fought very hard. I saw how hard Sebastian was fighting. I was actually moving from Koh Samui to Chiang Mai and I pulled the car over to Bangkok and I decided to try to do what I could here. And so that's where I donated at the National Blood Center for you. And then I tried to get more O negative donors and to convince people that I'm not crazy when I'm asking you, your blood type and we have this emergency is very difficult to explain to people because people don't understand that blood type is genetic and it doesn't exist here. So I had a, you know, there, we are absolutely swimming in RH negative here in Bangkok with a large expat community. It is the education process that we have to get through. We have to push through this. Um, so Sebastian isn't able to make it here because uh, unfortunately he had to go back to France. Um, yeah, I, 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 go I, ahead. I'd like to add uh, one thing because it's uh, down to any of us to actually solve that problem. We all know someone who is O negative who could go and give blood. And we all probably know 10 people. And it took, it took about two weeks, right, to find me 10 units? Two weeks for 10 units, and that yeah. was consistent advocacy. Yeah. Um, I, I went down to 8% hematocrit, which is like, yeah. Uh, uh, my, my heart was pumping, pumping water at that, at that moment. So, um, the, uh, the second thing is stay fit, guys. Stay fit. Because your heart is the last thing that's going to keep it pumping. And keep fighting. And keep fighting. Exactly. So, sorry. Next slide. Okay, this is Sebastian. This is uh, Luca's really good friend. One of the problems that we faced is uh, Luca and Sebastian are from France, so the majority of their connections were French, and they were being rejected from having lived in France. So that made it very difficult for them to reach out um, from their own communities. Uh, this would be August, where your friends, the people that you did know, were turned away, and that resorts to Facebook. And, um, that's difficult to get through many of the Facebook groups because people don't understand. And it sounds desperate and it sounds ridiculous and then there's the arguments over the UK restriction or the age restriction and it becomes a fight on Facebook that no administer of a Facebook group wants to see. Um, so it's very difficult to even get blood donation requests approved on the Facebook groups. Um, so this is Sebastian with relentless Facebook posts and most expats do not understand this urgency. Next slide. This is Sue Altman and she will tell her story from Phuket. Good evening ladies and gentlemen. Um, I've actually written notes so that I can get through this. Um, like Luca, it is hard telling your story to people. Um, and I'm lucky to be here to be able to talk to you tonight. Uh, today is actually my 31st wedding anniversary. Uh, my husband, Tom, 
and I decided to, rather than to go out and celebrate, we would be here tonight with you because to us, this is very, a very, very important thing because we have been through a very hard time with me. We're long-term residents of Thailand. Um, we consider Phuket our home. Uh, we have lived and worked in Asia for more than 30 years and the majority of our time has been living in Thailand. Uh, I, I became a blood donor when I was 18 years old. I worked for Channel 9 in Australia and they had a program with all staff uh, that they recommended that you became a blood donor. And I found out I was O negative and, and it was special even in Australia so I just always uh, gave blood on a regular basis every three months. Uh, being O negative um, has always been a very, very important thing to me. And when I moved to Thailand, uh, I became a blood donor here. Every time I received a call to go and give blood, I always went. I was never too busy, as some people were. My attitude was, well, maybe one day I might need blood, and I hope everyone's not too busy to come and give me blood. Um, as it turned out, I needed blood. In uh, late 2019, I was diagnosed with a life-threatening cancer, and I had three months of uh, radio and chemotherapy uh, here in Bangkok at, at Bumrungrad. Uh, after it was, was over, I should have been recovering, and, and I went back to Phuket. However, my health deteriorated in the first week and Tom had to rush me to hospital. I thought, uh, I thought I was dehydrated. It turned out that all my bloods, my platelets, my red blood, my white bloods were all crashing. Um, Phuket um, doesn't have a lot of the expertise either, you know, so, it, but we did have a doctor who stepped outside her comfort zone and managed to keep me alive. Um, what happened was that my, I had, the first cancer had been cured, but because of some different problems, my bone marrow was compromised. And uh, trying to, uh, to get those things back together is, is not good. Uh, I have ended up with a, a disease called uh, M MDS, which is myelodysplastic syndrome, which is uh, your bone marrow. Fortunately today, my, due to other medications, after several months of platelet transfusions and red blood transfusions, uh, my, my health, my blood's leveled out. I do, however, still have to have white cell injections twice a week because my, uh, my white cells don't work. And one day again, I might need red blood and, and platelet transfusions. One of the, uh, the biggest problems when we were trying to get blood, because we were told by the hospitals at the time, you have to get the blood, you have to get the platelets, we don't have enough for you. Uh, we went on social media, we had a lot of media contacts because of my history in, in, in the media. Uh, people from all different societies and things chased blood all over Thailand. And I didn't know Nancy until recently and, and found out that she'd heard about uh, my problem and she was also one of the people who was trying to chase blood and platelets for me. And, and platelets are... Um, and, and the doctor, I think, will agree. Platelets, only certain people can give platelets because um, it's to do with the, the width of the veins and um, usually it's men that can give them. Um, a lot of women can't because our veins are too small. The, it's it's uh, the red blood and the platelets are separated during uh, the donation. And, and it's great because the red blood can be pump straight back into the body and the platelets are separated. But when you've got such a low number of people giving um, platelets, 
it, it brings it down lower than the statistics that the doctor has, uh, has already shown us. Um, on two occasions, my bloods dropped to a critical level. Uh, once in Bamrangrad, where at the last minute uh, they were able to stabilise me and to, to get blood. Um, my situation uh, seemed to stabilise and uh, Bamrangrad sent me back to Phuket thinking that I would, I'd be okay. Uh, it was very shortly after, again, my, uh, my bloods all dropped and uh, I became critical and I was in ICU. Um, my platelets dropped to 1,000, um, yes. which is, uh, normally they're between 150,000 and 450,000. Mine were 1,000 and at the hospital, uh, they told us that I was unlikely to make it through the night. I called my son in Australia and I said goodbye to him. I said, there's nothing they can do. They can't get any platelets or blood for me. And Luca and I talked about this earlier and um, we both went through when Luca almost died and when I almost died. Um, I think we had a choice of either dying or saying, no, we're not going to die. We're going to fight a bit longer. I went to sleep in ICU and I woke up a few hours later. It was 2 a.m. and I thought, I'm still here. It was 5 a.m. in Australia and I rang my son and I said to him, I'm still here and I'm not going to die today. Fortunately, they managed to get some platelets and some blood and I'm still here. Uh, I was uh, put in touch with a, a, a doctor here at the Sirirat uh, University and uh, I went and saw him and he tried me out on some platelet medication and red cell injections, which we did not think would, win, uh, would work. I'd had a lot of transfusions. My ferritin levels, and ferritin is uh, an iron. Uh, I, I don't, people think there's one iron in your body, or you know, but there's a lot in ferritin, and I won't go into the details because I'm not a medical person, but my ferritin level was 4,750. Uh, I think it's supposed to be around 80 to 130? Yes. yes, okay, so mine was 4,750. We had a competition before on numbers. Um, my ferret, lost. Yeah, you lost. Uh, my ferritin is still over 1,000. Uh, but my red cell and my platelets, because of the drugs that the doctor didn't think would work, did work, they are now holding on their own without medication um, and have been doing that now for over a year, well over a year. Um, as I said earlier, I'm still on and I guess I will be uh, and, and until my time's up um, on these white cell injections. What is really important is that people understand their own blood types. And everyone out there tonight that's watching this, I, I ask you, do you know your blood type? Do you know it? Because a lot of people don't. And the second thing is, if you're in the age group, then get out there and become a donor because one day, you might need it. 
Now, a lot of the people who gave blood or who wanted to try and give blood to me, and there were an enormous amount of people, went to the, uh, the Red Cross and went to the Wachira Hospital in Phuket, and they were turned down because they had lived in the UK um, during the mad cow disease. This was heartbreaking for us because, and people were desperate. This law has been overturned in other countries, uh, in the UK and in Australia, very recently, I might add. Um, to date, it hasn't been overturned in Thailand, and we are hoping that very soon the um, Thai government will accept that we need this to be overturned so that more people can give blood and more lives can be saved. And we hope that will happen very soon, Doctor. Um, thank you, and all I can say again is get to know your own blood and become a blood donor because you will save lives. You will save lives. And maybe it's one of your own family, or maybe it's your own. Thank you. So we, we talked about the, uh, the drama we encountered, but for us it was actually nothing compared to what uh, our beloved went through. So you could, I mean, that could be you. And uh, so my wife, my friends didn't sleep. And, and what really my husband sleep. Tom went through and, and all of our friends. And yeah, I mean, when you're the one there, and at times, you sort of say, oh, well, okay, it's going to happen. But they're the people that are there watching you, and they're going crazy trying, trying to get blood for you and platelets and everything, and everyone, and especially when people are getting turned away because they don't quite fit the criteria. <laughs> we would have taken anything. Yes. You know, hey, don't worry about checking it, just give it to us. Um, we were going to die anyway. Fortunately, we we're, we're both here, <laughs> thanks to, to lots of people giving, uh, giving us blood and uh, to the society. Well, stop talking now. <laughs> Love you both. I knew, I've known you for, for quite well, and all your friends, and I know how hard we fought. Absolutely. At least we get the benefit of knowing our donors. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd like to introduce uh, Ms. Next slide. Ms. Nakrita Mwanswang. And um, if I can, if I can uh, speak very quickly, she is who we all want to be. She is our superstar idol. She donates every 90 days. แนะนําตัวนะคะชื่อเล่นก็คือชื่อแมวนะคะครั้งแรกเลยที่เริ่มบริจาคก็คือว่าไม่รู้เลยว่าตัวเองอ่ะเป็นเลือดเน็กแล
to to let them test the blood if she can donate to that person or not. And at that moment, the patient already in the surgery room waiting for the blood. So at that time, gonna be uh, something very important for her. So next step. ก็ตอนเช้าก็เลยเดินทางไปที่โรงพยาบาลแล้วก็ทําการเช็คเลือดหน้าห้องที่หน้าห้องเลือดอะค่ะว่าเป็นเลือดเน็กหรือเปล่ารู้แต่ว่าเป็น A พอเช็คแล้วแล้วว่าเป็นเป็นเน็กแน่นอนอะทั้งทั้งเจ้าหน้าที่แล้วก็ทั้งญาติผู้ป่วยก็ดีใจแล้วก็แบบเพกันลั่นหน้าห้องตรวจเลือดโอเค so after found out that she already got a negative everybody in front of that room like screaming out loud that like, oh This is the girl who really special on that day to come donate for for the patient on that day. ตั้งแต่นั้นมาก็พยายามดูแลร่างกายเพิ่งรู้ว่าตัวเองเนี่ยมันมีเลือดกรุ๊ปเน็กเนี่ยคือมันรู้ว่าตัวเองมีเลือดพิเศษเนี่ยก็พยายามจะดูแลร่างกายแล้วก็ตั้งแต่นั้นมาก็เริ่มต้นบริจาคมาตั้งแต่เมื่อ9ปีที่แล้วอะค่ะบริจาคปีละสาปีละสี่ครั้งมาโดยตลอด So start from that day that she start donate blood. And she trying to look after herself really well, and trying to donate um, four times a year, so let's say 90 days, every 90 days. Um, from that day till today, it been nine years already that she been donated. ก็ได้ทางสภากาชาติไทยบางครั้งการบริจาคอะค่ะก็จะผ่านรถของสภากาชาติไทยก็จะมีรถของเนกาทีฟอะค่ะไปรับถึงที่บ้านบางทีทำงานอยู่ก็ติดต่อมาก็ไปรับที่ทำงานแล้วบางบางครั้งแต่ก็อาจจะเป็นถึงหลายครั้งที่ว่าญาติผู้ป่วยอะค่ะลงไว้ใน Facebook แล้วพอดีว่าอยู่ในกรุ๊ปเลือดจิตอาสาเป็นแอดมินของกรุ๊ปเลือดจิตอาสาก็เลยรู้ผ่าน Facebook ผ่านไลน์อย่างเงี้ยหลายครั้งก็คือช่วยประชาสัมพันธ์แล้วก็ช่วยออกไปบริจาคก่อนกำหนด um, so every time to, so, um, in Thailand we have Thai red Thai red cross right to go uh, To have donate bank and Thai Red Cross have the like we call a van to go pick up for every donate to come donate and from that day she trying to find if anywhere here in Thailand that can be a person or a speaker can announce to. Increase more people to come and donate in in this special type of blood. ครั้งล่าสุดนะคะก็ไปบริจาคที่โรงพยาบาลนครปฐมเนื่องจากว่าผู้ป่วยเกิดอุบัติเหตุต้องรับการผ่าตัดแต่ว่าร้องขอมาทางหน่วยงานทางของสภากาชาตินะคะก็คือไม่มีเลือดก็เจอใน Facebook เองเหมือนกันก็วิ่งรถจากปทุมธานีไปบริจาคให้ที่นครปฐม So the recent one that she done to know that it from her place to Patum Thane to donate and this case that she found out and she saw that on Facebook again. So I think the Facebook be the biggest thing for her now to look out for people who need blood. พอเราไปเจอญาติผู้ป่วยอะค่ะเขาเจอเราเขาวิ่งเข้ามาก่อนเราอะเพราะว่าคนป่วยอะค่ะนอนรอเลือดเพราะว่าผ่าตัดไม่ได้ไม่มีเลือดก็คือว่าเขาเป็นเลือดกรุ๊ปเน็กเหมือนกันแล้วแล้วไม่มีเลือดก็ไม่สามารถจะผ่าตัดได้ญาติๆเขาต่างแบบว่าวิ่งเข้ามาก่อนเราแล้วก็ยกมือไหว้เราอะมันเป็นอะไรที่แบบว่าเรามีความสุขอะค่ะที่เราได้ช่วยเขาอะ Well every time that she donate she feel like this is what she need to be doing every time and last time that the the recent one that everybody uh, Who waiting for the do donor in front of the room come and give her a big hug and cuddle? She feel she feel like that that is the biggest moment that she can give someone life to live on. In in the position of the Thai people, because Thai people have a lot of blood in their body, so they want to wing ball for all of us, help the social distance, and help to spread the word, and help to come out and deliver. เหมือนว่าประเทศไทยเป็นบ้านของท่านนะคะช่วยดูแลคนไทยเหมือนกับครอบครัวของท่าน so uh, in the last so since she is Thai we are Thai and everybody lives in Thai now and she is one let's say three percent or three percent of one thousand who who has uh, negative blood she like to 
in white expat here who lives here in Thailand uh, become a, do a donate more and we can get blood to help other, uh, uh, help each other expat or whoever who need blood here in Thailand. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next slide, please. So I'd like to share some success stories. All right, so with the Facebook, uh, the Facebook emergency blood donations, I think this is one of the most important career things that I have had is to be the administrator of a Facebook group because this one is the one that saves lives. And uh, we have three. This is a woman who has to have a cesarean section and we're looking for AB negative. So AB negative in Thailand would be about eligible donors, let's guess about one in 12,000. So today and tomorrow, we have three foreigner AB negative donors heading to the blood banks to have the blood on stock for her cesarean section. So we're, we're, we're changing lives here and advocacy matters. Next slide. She was in Chiang Mai. Uh, this was, I was in Chiang Mai at this time on the 2nd of February. She needed uh, 10 units of O negative in four days. Now we just heard from Luca and Sue that this is an insurmountable task. It certainly was in 2020. It certainly was in August of 2022, but I've learned from both of your cases to be aggressive and be aggressive immediately. And this meant actually me driving and going to restaurants and the Freebird Cafe, which is a social justice cafe in Chiang Mai, and asking people what are your blood type. And I actually drove donors Peep, and was able to convince them. Now we've been constantly posting this on Facebook. So they're beginning to understand. And we sourced 10 donors in four days, and I didn't think that that was going to happen. So I think the data on this, I'm not quite sure. I believe there were two Thai donors, and the other eight were wrong. Not that I care. We just need to, we just need to find them. But the important point here is that the Thai population understands the value of RH negative and the expat community, we need continuous education, penetration through every source that we can to get more donors out there. The majority of the people who donated for her were first time donors in Thailand. We did have some people that were rejected because of uh, having been on a vacation in the United Kingdom, but we will get to that in a second. Um, next, next story. Recently, this was the most recent case that we had here in, uh, that uh, needed many units. This was an infant. Uh, my days blur together because I somewhere work between 12 to 17 hours per day, 17 hours during an emergency, but I'll say I'm putting in about 10 to 12 um, and educating or um, advocating or sourcing donors. This was an O negative infant. Um, these are some of the donors, so the infant, this was a seven day old infant, and we mobilized donors within 24 hours. And these are some of the people who gave the gift of life. And we have people from Switzerland, Sweden, Australia, Germany, and two Norwegian men who wish to remain anonymous. The baby survived. So we have, we've won. But there needs to be so much more advocacy and everybody has the ability, whether you can donate or not, whether you are RH positive or not, or RH negative, it doesn't matter. We need to penetrate the expat community consistently to understand how important RH negative is. Uh, we've grown our Thailand emergency Facebook group from 400 in December to over 1,000 now. 
That doesn't mean that all 1,000 of us are RH negative, because advocacy is just as important as donation. My ability to donate is four times per year. My ability to advocate is much greater. So everyone here can play a very important role in saving somebody's life. So to all of, uh, I know that the Thailand Emergency Facebook group um, is uh, dispersed throughout Thailand, and many of you are watching here on Facebook Live. I want to thank you for everything that you have done, because I didn't do this alone. Um, it was all of you, and we've made a difference to many people's lives. So everyone watching um, throughout from Koh Samui to Chiang Rai to Karat, um, bless you and thank you for your hard work in saving lives. And thank you for everyone at this panel. It was a hard panel. And I said I wouldn't cry, but I'm a softy. So, um, I cried before. Um, but thank you for attending this panel. Uh, as I said, one of the one of my, I think, greatest accomplishments career-wise is actually being an administrator of a Facebook group because this has had the most impact of anything that I've done. Um, and as I leave this leave this panel, we have one more announcement. If you could please, and if everyone, this is. Thank you. Well, thank you, Nancy. I very much appreciate your advocacy. And um, um, because of you, now we have met. You know, Thailand is in desperate need for, for, the, for, the, for the Irish negative blood groups. And uh, <clears throat> when I get to meet Nancy, and we share the concern that there were hurdles uh, in the donations, because of this one specific uh, issue about the, the risk of variant uh, Jack Creutzfeldt disease or Mad Cow disease that have occurred several years in, in, in the UK. And this was an international issue that uh, Thailand never had this issue, but we adopt in the national system of the safe blood, uh, practicing, uh, providing a safe blood for everyone. And so there was a a restriction that has been placed for a long time, as you mentioned there. Um, um, now that we learn, and Nancy has supplied us with the information on the restriction, uh, lifting away the, the restriction that was placed before in several countries now. So we have uh, convened and uh, um, revised the, 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 the issue, the, the restriction. And I'm pleased today to announce that Thailand have uh, lifted the restriction on the donations uh, for the risk of the VCJD as well. So um, people who were rejected uh, in the past because of this very issue can now be a donor. Um, uh, so um, actually, we, we can, we'd like to invite you back. <laughs> And, uh, and, and, and we, you know, we tested for other reasons. And then we would welcome you to be a donor in, in this regard in order to uh, uh, provide safe supply of uh, all Irish negative and positive bloods. And now, um, however, the restriction that was lifted, there was some residual concerns. So we would allow the you know, donations, uh, but uh, we have to process it so that we can give the red cells but not the white cells, which is not used anyway, or the platelets yet. So uh, that's why the question, uh, the question will be still there in order to make a, uh, so that we can process properly. So um, when you see this uh, questionnaire about the VCJD risk, uh, while being in UK at a certain point of time, um, uh, you will, you, you know, you, you, you have to report at that. <laughs> But uh, we were not uh, disqualified uh, from donation. Um, that now, now that we, at least a policy issue now, that, uh, that it's, it's, it's allowed donation that can be done. But it will, we have to work you know, with the, all of the you know, uh, contributing 
uh, blood bank center in order to assure of this uh, the donation policy, recent change in donor policy, so that we have to work with all of you, uh, like uh, in the with the local donor, to make sure if they have, you know, but at this time, and so that you can come to at least National Blood Center, and so that you can welcome, you know, all of the eligible donors, uh, because they, we can uh, work together uh, to make a supply for the ice negative be more sustainable at this time. Okay, Facebook team, Thailand Emergency Blood Donations Facebook team that's watching this tonight. Uh, this is going to take some time for this to disseminate, this information and policy change to disseminate down to every blood bank. Um, and uh, in other words, this won't happen tomorrow. Uh, it will be worked and we are going to work to educate the foreign population to welcome them back from the UK, from France, and from Ireland. And this is a big win because this is the, you know, the, the preponderance of our expat population is from the UK, France, and Ireland. And uh, again, just give, please give the Thai Red, thank you, Thai Red Cross for doing this. And please allow the Thai Red Cross uh, some time for this. It's a very large organization. Uh, it is in almost every city and every town. Please give them some time to disseminate this change. But thank you so much. Yes, and we would love to um, um, work with all of you, uh, all the communities, because Irish Negative people are special people for the Thai donation system. So we make sure that we can work together in order to make uh, you you know, um, a special path <laughs> to, in order to make uh, this uh, blood supply sustainable. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I, um, I had some questions that came um, over. Uh, I did not go Facebook Live. We're Facebook broadcasting, and we have some questions, and I think that they've been answered but I will ask them from Nancy Begnal, who lives in Pai, which is a uh, community about an, maybe an hour away from Chiang Mai, which is a uh, highly density foreign population. Uh, they are hoping to have the Chiang Mai blood bank, the vehicle uh, visit maybe one time per month or every other month or somehow fit this in the schedule and we will work this. And we also need for community members to put the word out and advocate for when the blood vehicle comes to organize the expat community. Uh, the Thai Red Cross cannot do this without our help. So we need to help ourselves in this as well. So thank you, Nancy Begnal from Pi for your question. Um, the other one was from Bob Kelly of Chiang Rai. He used to be a regular donor in the UK and wants to know why he can't donate here. And now, thank you, sir, you have answered Bob Kelly's question from Chiang Rai. All right, that one's closed, that's great. Um, I think that is the two questions that I had over Facebook. Um, and um, I don't, I think, I, I, do you have any questions, do you think that you, or this was covered, and I think you asked the question about blood banking, why it was important, and why we can't do the on-call. Yeah, so um, what's more effective between on-call donations or having a, a blood bank, and which would be preferable? Oh, um, definitely, we have regular donor and bank of blood. Um, that would be most, most effective, I would say. Um, in the past, we were used to thinking that so for the very, very rare blood type, you know, if we bank, banking some blood, it will never be used and expired, and we don't want that to happen. Yeah, but in, in reality, um, even the most prevalent blood type that is in blood bank now, they never expires, because we, we can store blood for 42 days, but uh, most of the blood are gone by seven mm -hmm. days because of the uh, a lot of requests for using. 
So, so if, uh, if it's possible, we would rather um, have uh, uh, enough uh, blood units in the bank so that we can distribute to any, anywhere. Is there a better uh, structure or focus for the Thailand Emergency Blood Donation Group to be using than if, uh, given the fact that uh, blood banking seems to be more effective than direct donations? Okay, so the, the, the thing that we have to look at mathematically here is that in larger cities such as Chiang Mai, Bangkok, Phuket, there should never be zero RH negative available. These are heavily density expat population, and that is too risky to never have any banked. Okay, so we've got to be routine donors specifically in these large cities. Now, here's a caveat here. When we look at a small community like Koh Tao, right, that doesn't make sense. And in that case, the on-call list, or as Michael said, at least having like two units available or a bare minimum until we can mobilize people um, is, is the way to save lives. Having zero in the bank, and let's say you have a spleen rupture, you have to wait three days maybe until we can call people or they can make it to the blood bank and then it's two days to process. You're looking at a five day wait. You can die in those five days. So the real answer here is because we know that we have enough expats here, and having lift, now lifted the restriction of the UK, France, and Ireland, which by the way, has the highest percentage of RH negative in their population, we have just expanded the donor pool immensely. So let's move away from that strategy of being on call, which is highly ineffective and highly risky, to become regular donors, just like our superstar, Miss Nakrita, because she knows how to do this, right? This is what we do. Um, that's got to happen. But thank you for your question. Thank you for answering, Nancy. And Nancy, if you allow me, um, when we were brainstorming and talking about all those things, um, we always came back to one point, which is uh, blood is universal. Even if tonight we give uh, the impression that uh, it's a problem for uh, British people, French people, or West, uh, Westerners, it's absolutely not. You can be rich, you can be poor, you can be black, you can be yellow, you can be green, or whatever. You can still be RH negative, and that can affect anybody, including your grandchildren, including your... Yeah, and so the on. baby. Exactly. The o yeah. th this is an O-negative Thai baby. Yeah, and that's very important and very powerful to imagine that's universal. Can happen, it can happen to anybody, regardless of the class, the gender, and the, uh, the ethnicity. Okay. Are there any more questions? So, where can we go to donate? Where can we go to donate? And do you have any printed materials that you can share with us so we can spread around to our? colleagues, friends, co-workers, uh, so they are aware of this, because I wasn't aware of this at all. And thank you so much for the uh, exposure today, and congratulations. We'll celebrate life with you and another anniversary of many others to come. Thank you. Yes, um, you can uh, donate uh, anytime, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. at the National Blood Center in Angru Dunang Road. And that's uh, where the, the, our team there, the three of us in the back here, she, um, they are from the um, uh, public relation service of the Thai Red Cross. And that, um, but you have to pardon me, not all of us are fluent in English. <laughs> so that would be a little bit uh, of a hurdle, but um, we would love to, you know, we would love to welcome everyone. Ah, yes, about age restriction. So um, we are aware that um, many, uh, the, our usual age restriction is the first time donation has to be before 60. Uh, but if you donate before 60, then you can continue to donate until 70 years old. Uh, but um, uh, 
there was a question regarding that if you donate in some other countries before, can you, uh, and you come to Thailand after 60, can you donate? And we have worked this out, you know, there was a discussion, you, you know, and let, you know, because of Nancy, um, raising issue, <laughs> make us aware that, uh, you know, Thai people never have this issue, right? And they never donate outside the country before 60. We all live here, so, uh, but uh, the people have considered this condition, and they said, why not? We, we, we would love to, uh, we, I would say, um, at least in the National Blood Center, we would allow this to happen. You can donate um, up to 70 years old, provided that you have donated somewhere before 60. Thank Is this going to, uh, are you going to try and get this information out to the rest of the um, Red Cross around the country? Because it is very important yes. in, in other areas that this age uh, is, is lifted. 60 is quite young. That's right. You know? <laughs> yes, yes. That was in place for, for a number of years. You know, but um, uh, we, we, we will try to work this out. So, uh, but if you um, experience some, some, uh, some, you know, some difficulties, <laughs> difficulties you can, um, uh, we, have, we will have make a mechanism so that we can, uh, you know, if something may fall through the cracks. So. Sure. So that you can uh, uh, kindly notify us, so that we can uh, re-educate you know, the people as well. Because so not everyone uh, that works with us are employed by the National Blood Center. We 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 mm -hmm. work with some hospital. You know, they allow donations. Uh, they they collect blood, test it at the National Red Cross, and then send it back to their hospital. So these are collaborators. They they are not. Um, they, are, they will respect uh, our regulations, but they're not, imp you know, they're not direct, uh, mm. you know, um, uh, not in command. <laughs> so we, that's some, some, something we have to work out as well. But this is a, this is a major start. That's right. And this, at last we have a start. We didn't have this before. Major. So thank you. This is major. This is, are there any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Oh, I'm sorry. Right, thank you. Um, could I just clarify, please? If you're over 60 and have given blood outside Thailand, do you have to provide proof that you have given blood before, which could be very hard to get? Yes, um, there has to be something. Uh, at this time, I would say if there's some evidence, that would be good. But, um, um, you know, <laughs> I, think, I think that is, uh, that is a question in terms of how, how the policy says yes, but exactly how it works out needs to be defined. So a common sense approach right. might be adopted yes. at the time. Yes, yes. Okay. but I can't promise you in terms of you know, how the, the people at the very front end will. Okay. Uh, yeah, I can't assure that as, as yet. Okay, um, second question. Nancy, um, have you approached the Dean of, of the diplomatic missions to then get this out to all of the embassies and diplomatic network because they're always looking for good ideas. Yes, I have. You have. And what's the response been? None. And um, <laughs> it, it, I, I can conjecture here. I can conjecture... Uh, being a professor of political science, that a, a government is not going to get involved with another government's internal uh, policy. So this came from more of a grassroots effort than, let's say, the United States government or the French government intervening. I'm not talking about okay. changing policy, which we've done tonight. Mm -hmm. What I'm talking about is using the diplomatic missions as an outreach to the expats so to convey messages and communicate and also diplomatic missions also have staff that might want to donate as well and families. So you've got a two-pronged two approach. Yes. Um, I, have, I have found no success in that uh, with the... And I'm, I'm not going to put anybody, any specific country or liaison on the spot. Uh, I have reached out 
and we don't get response. Hi, my name is Henriette, and I'm living here in Bangkok uh, about nine years now. Thank you for the, the whole panel and, and the very impressive stories that really brings home the, the problem. I, I'm not sure if we are, I mean, you know, we are not there yet, but I, I think we heard that there are now some promising developments with, it's easier to, to get, give our blood, but I have had, my husband and I, we are both O negative. We, have, we are together more than 30 years. We live together in pretty remote places and we thought, like we are, we are each other's donor. Thankfully, we are both uh, O negative. So we could give each other blood if we needed it. We have never needed it, but I've been given blood to others um, a lot of times in my life. And in here in Bangkok, when I saw the calls like, like Luca and Susan's calls on, on Facebook, I've been banging on the door of the Red Cross saying, I've been always giving blood, please, I'm O negative. And I was always rejected because of my age. Mm -hmm. Because of my age. And I've been really trying to give blood because I say, these people are dying and they want my blood and I have good blood. So now, I'm now um, 67 next, next week, he's 72. I hear he cannot maybe even be my donor anymore if I will need it. Is that so? And um, that would be really worrying me because I haven't close by if I need it. But is there a thing that we can do um, if we know somebody who has an O negative that we can write a, will, a kind of living will saying, we know these people are O negative can they, we want their blood if we need it. Is there something like that that is possible? I mean, you have to think creatively, I think. Like a waiver. <laughs> like a waiver, yeah. We, I mean, honestly, we have to go there as long as it's, it's still hard for us to give blood. So I, I want to I in, intercept this question mathematically, okay? We do not have an RH negative problem here in Thailand. We have enough expats who carry enough RH negative that there should never be any shortfalls. That's, I mean, this is, that's the solution. Um, I, we can go on the subway and you've got 10 O negative or 10 A negative and you, we do not have an RH negative shortfall in Thailand. We have an awareness and a donor shortfall. And that is a big difference. Second thing I want to talk about here is that I do understand that we have educated people on the RH negative awareness and we have instilled some fear in people, which is a little bit unfounded. So we do understand, and I will address this now publicly, we do understand that some PACs have developed, that we're going to hold our blood just in case something happens to us. That doesn't work because once again, it's got to be banked. It takes a four-day process. And the probability of me ever needing a, a transfusion, now you might dis disagree, but the probability for most people is close to zero. Yeah, sure. Okay, the probability of my donation saving his life is 100%. So if I'm gonna bank on anything, I'm gonna bank on the statistics that having these packs is uh, zero help. Donating regularly is saving lives. Yeah, I think they're they're both they're both ours, right? Like uh, we, a couple of us work no, these. I'm happy to give blood anytime. Okay, so. Um, sure, I think so. But with with what I have heard, yes, you are still eligible. <laughs> but um, at, at seventy two, I think um, I mean, uh, you can always be an advocate, right? So I think uh, I think that that was an important issue. You can advocate for more, much more people, so that uh, yes, yes, we will we'll make sure uh, we we listen to you, and we will take this into account and, and allow special, uh, you know. But we have to consider a lot of things. <laughs> I cannot.
say right right off my you know I would love to I'd love to welcome you as a donor but um, you know certain things have to be worked out in terms of policy changes and other things okay um, so I would like to thank everybody for their time and sir it's been an honor to have you on this panel and thank you for making this was a big deal everybody okay Facebook friends out there of Thailand emergency Facebook group this was this was our advocacy this wasn't just us this was uh, a lot of work to get to where we are and a lot of awareness so thank you sir for making these very um, huge changes for both the Thai population and and the foreigner population thank you okay Okay, thank you, and thank you for attending. Okay, I think we're good. I, okay, I think, I, I, think, I think I need a glass of wine to celebrate. <laughs> so I'm gonna do that, so thank you for your time. And I have a, I have a couple of this. And by the way, it's very easy to give blood in Bangkok. Yeah? Take the BTS downstairs, enter the building, fill up a form, answer questions to the doctor. Done. That's it. Very easy. <laughs>